important that the park have an administrative home and specified ownership and that that be under the Parks Commission um, so that the efforts that have gone <coughs> into it thus far um, recently as well as all of the community efforts in the past can continue. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Uh, good evening, Byron Lane, 18 Merrill Street. Uh, in the same light, I'm here to speak on behalf of the park. I actually grew up on Milk Street, and I can't tell you the countless hours that I've spent in that playground. Um, I also have a nine-month-old son, and I would love to take him as soon as he can start walking and just play. So please, I, I ask of you to do the right thing, and uh, here for the Brown School Park. Thanks. Thank you. Nine months. That's it for public. <coughs> We move on to the very short consent agenda, which consists this evening, Mr. President, of just the minutes. Motion approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move on to the right over agenda. It's communication number one. It is a letter from uh, Kathy Haywood with respect to a request uh, to hold a public forum on the bull nose. October 6, 2013, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. In order to allow the candidates to speak, uh, she would uh, have a public address system. It will be free of charge to the city. Uh, she says also in her note, you can see that it would be for school committee members also. Um, I don't know if you want me to read the whole thing, Mr. President. No, no, Second. Second. Close the vote. Right here. Motion to approve. Any discussion? All I have no problem with this. I just don't know if this is a city-sanctioned event. What is the difference between this and a busker coming here and, and performing? Really, that's what this is. Now it's becoming sort of sanctioned by the city that we are giving over space. Maybe that doesn't mean anything, but there's just something odd about it. I don't know if we have any purview, honestly, because anyone can get up and stand up and speak. A buster can bring out an instrument and play. So I'm not sure of the difference. I'm all for it. I just don't know if we need to vote on it. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with Councilor Earls there. It's the you know, same thing of the people out holding political signs on the Bulmos uh, on a Saturday morning. So I, I, I don't think we need to, to, to do any of that. I urge uh, to take back the the approval in second and receiving five. And not to kill us, I guess the only exception would be amplification. Does it, is, do they need <coughs> approval for amplification? And I guess thinking that, um, I guess it might be under approval second thought. I'm not sure. Because I don't believe you're going to amplify the music without approval. Is that correct? I'm getting a nod from the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Burton. If Ms. Hayward's proposal was to do this at a public park, it would require a permit to be approved by the Parks Commission. I see this as no different, except that the City Council has authority for the, this particular public area. So I have no problem with it either way. Any further discussion? <coughs> Move the question. The vote is to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Communication two. <coughs> Address to Thomas F. O'Brien. Uh, dear Council O'Brien, I'm seeking permission to use the dog park area at Cashman Park between the hours of 9.15 and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, October 6th, to benefit the Wayne Geiger Crisis Center. Interlox annually supports the center's walk against domestic violence. And we've created a unique approach to rally our staff, including their four-legged friends. To thank our supporters, we'd like to gather in the park for refreshments and send off-leash fun directly after the walk. Wondering if you could provide us with a special permit for this one-time use. We can comply with any special requirements. Ms. Daly, Robin Sparrow, Director of Operations for Intel. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Communication <coughs> three. The late file, Mr. President, it is a letter addressed to you, members of City Council, uh, representing Yankee Clipper Council's Boy Scout of America PAC 21 as their PopCon fundraising chair. The PopCon fundraiser is the only fundraiser we have and supports our annual operating budget, requesting use of space at Market Square to set up a couple of tables for what we call a show and sell. Motion, Motion to approve. approve. Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Close, <laughs> I should say, Mr. President, that was from Kathleen Betts, Pac-21 Popcorn Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> Appointments, second reading. Second reading of appointments. The appointments are Paul B. Bertrand, 1 Mosley Place, Henry Port Trust Fund, September 30th, 2016, followed by Malcolm Carnway, 22 Strong Street, to the Historical Commission until September 30th, 2015, Craig Goodrich, 3 Dal Logan Drive, Salisbury, Special Police Officer, Alan M. McGuire, 15 Lincoln Ave, Special Police Officer, uh, and a reappointment, Julie Langwan, Langwarong. 13 Cushing Street, Salisbury, as treasurer until August 30th, 2016. Motion approved collectively. collectively. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> Motion approve all five appointments. Councilor Darabin. Yes. Councilor Earl. Yes. Councilor Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirso. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Sullivan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor President O'Brien. Yes. Move on to audits. Audit number one, five two plate. Audit number one is right here. Reads as follows, dated September 30th, that upon the sale, lease, or removal from service as a public school of any portion of the buildings and grounds of the G.W. Brown Early Elementary School, Map 21, Parcels 3 and 26, the City of Newburyport shall dedicate and hold permanently for public park and playground uses under the meaning <coughs> of Chapter 45, Mass General Law, an area of such site that is at least equal in size to the schoolyard currently located on the southeasterly portion of the site, including the mulched area for play equipment, the basketball court, the so-called amphitheater and that this order is subject to any and all votes required by the new report school committee. Submitted jointly, Councilors Gregory D. Earls and Ari B. Hersa. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Order carries. Order number two. Order number two is as follows, dated September 30th. That the City Council of the City of Newburyport release for public inspection all executive session minutes pertaining to the ongoing problems with Plum Island water and sewer services, as well as all test results related to materials used in building the water and sewer system on Plum Island. Submitted Council Richard E. Sullivan. Jr. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Yes, Council Sullivan. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this really is about open government. Okay, it, I am asking simply for the release of the executive sessions pertaining to the problems with Plum Island water and sewer. And from what I understand, the test results have been back for a month and a half. That's from what I understand. Like I said, this is really about open government. The people on Plum Island, the people that are paying for this system to be built, the people that are paying the betterment charge every month, the people that are paying for the repairs as these problems arise, deserve to know, uh, without any speculation or continued rumor, what is going on with that system. This is not asking for the executive session minutes with regards to strategy and litigation. It's simply to inform the people on Plum Island. That's it. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as a taxpayer and resident of Plum Island, I stand in direct opposition of both this order and its intentions, which are clearly the result of this being an election year. As we continue to investigate this matter, we need to remain mindful of the best in interests of the residents of Plum Island and the city. We have been advised by our counsel and the Attorney General's office that discussions regarding litigation strategy and the spe specifics of potential problems not be made public until we have a better handle on the situation. I ask, what is this order trying to accomplish other than enhance political ambitions? Is this council in a better position to determine what should be made public and what should not be made public than the attorneys representing the city or the AG who represents the best interest of not only Newburyport residents but the Commonwealth? If this is approved, 
I sincerely hope that this council is ready to accept 100% of the responsibility for any and all impacts this has on the city's position moving forward. I am speaking for the residents of Plum Island when I say, please protect our interests throughout this. Please do so by voting this down. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm not a gambling person. Uh, the last time I played poker was probably when I was 14 years old and there was nowhere else to go except hanging out uh, with your friends uh, with a deck of cards. But um, lost your, lost, my lost analogy your would be that um, if we, the city, were playing poker against um, you know, people, people and entities that were involved in the construction of this project, and they saw their cards, we saw our cards, and we wanted to show our friends and family how, you know, the hand that we had, and we just picked it up and just waved it and showed all the world to see, including our opponents, what we had in our hand. That would be analogous to what we would be doing here. Um, I know uh, Councillor Sullivan said this would not be a release of the minutes, but the order says release for public inspection all executive session minutes. I would rather not have City Council uh, distracted by trying to create some sort of uh, very redacted um, set of minutes from these executive sessions. I think they need to be focused on whatever uh, the negotiations are um, with those entities and involving the Attorney General's office as well. Um, I think uh, folks who live on Plum Island and the ratepayers for our entire water and sewer system need to know that the council has been um, informed by the mayor as this has gone along uh, through a couple of executive sessions and I know that they would um, have every confidence if they've been in the room like we have. So I, I don't see that it serves any purpose other than to undermine any ongoing litigation that we may be involved in. Okay. Any further discussion? I don't know if this is something I want to uh, vote on right now. I, I would rather, I'd feel more comfortable having it go to committee, to really airing it out what it all means. And I don't know if that would be general government, which probably makes the most sense, or if it would be public utilities, because that's what we're talking about. Um, I feel we're going to be doing something on the floor here that I won't be comfortable with, because I can't think of all the ramifications now after hearing everybody speak. So um, I, would, I, I, would, I would urge the, the maker to um, refer to a committee. Thank you, Mr. President. But I stand in opposition to either of those uh, scenarios for the simple reason that, that when we enlisted the assistance of the Attorney General, uh, we obtained assistance that was going to cost the city potentially hundreds of thousands <coughs> of dollars were we to gain that assistance through private counsel. So that the assistance that we are ultimately going to need, legal assistance in this case, is enhanced by the credibility and the, and the much more substantial resources of the Attorney General, uh, much more substantial than those that we could presently afford. I understand that the maker of this proposal um, wants to see greater um, distribution of information. I think everyone is frustrated by the situation. We wish we could, as stewards of the, of the public trust, share all of what is known in City Hall with the residents of Plum Island and other people throughout the city. They have a right to know this at a time when it doesn't compromise their best interests. I'm confident that the Attorney General's recommendation to us, which was made with the full understanding of the council that we were to remain <coughs> Um, informed but silent on um, <coughs> the negotiations and the, the specifics in this matter were made with the best interests of the city in mind. And eventually all of the details will come out. But it would be imprudent of us and would give the Attorney General a signal that we are not a trustworthy and discreet partner in this potential litigation if we were to adopt a resolution of this type, an order of this type, or even consider it seriously in committee. Uh, because quite certainly that's exactly what the uh, interests who uh, misserved us on Plum Island would like to see happen. I very strongly urge the members to reject this proposal or ask the maker to withdraw it so that we can move forward and allow the Attorney General uh, to move forward with the confidence that, uh, that, that the Attorney General's office knows that we are, 
are prudent and discreet and trustworthy partners in this enterprise. Thank you, Mr. President. With regard to our um, blind trust in the Attorney General's office, um, I, would, I would suggest that um, our willingness to be good partners um, would be based on uh, some past history. And the past history of the residents of the area of Crow Lane will tell you that uh, trusting in the Attorney General to represent the best interests of the city of Newburyport and its residents is foolhardy at best. Uh, we were sold down the river by the Department of Environmental Protection and by the uh, Attorney General in the Crow Lane landfill. Um, we've been waiting for 12 years now for completion of a project that the state of Massachusetts assured us would only take 24 months to do. Um, every other weekend, uh, neighbors in that uh, community are subject to uh, gaseous smells that sometimes drive them from their homes. However, um, we can rest assured that the state of Massachusetts had our best interest when we spent millions of taxpayer dollars uh, putting in a um, water and sewer line to Plum Island, which we now find um, never was, <clears throat> depending on who you talk to, uh, engineered properly, uh, overseen properly, or installed properly. Um, the fact of the matter is that the people on Plum Island are owed a, and the people of all of Newburyport are owed an explanation and a telling of the facts as we know them today. Um, I'm concerned because this is the first I've heard that we've had results from testing for some time and I don't know if anybody on the city council has had a discussion with anyone who's privy to the results of that bolt testing. But uh, wouldn't it be nice for us to put aside our blind faith and actually be aware of the conditions that are going on? <coughs> Trusting in the Attorney General to represent the best interests of the city of Newburyport and its citizens doesn't give me cause to say that we should continue to obfuscate or um, cover up the facts of the construction that went on on this Plum Island Sewer and Water Project and um, assignment of blame because there's clearly blame, there's clearly culpability, and there clearly needs to be a remedy. And continuing to wait for the powers that be on Beacon Hill to provide it is <coughs> foolhardy. Just, <coughs> thank you, Mr. President. Just very briefly. Uh, first, first off, um, of the 11 counselors that were um, involved in um, the executive session, I, recall, I do not recall any counselor ever talking about the Plum Island Water and Sewer Project. Um, I think that the council kept that where it should be. Um, with that being said, um, there have been public meetings. Um, there have been uh, informational um, news releases, so to speak. So um, I, I would say, number one, the cat is out of the bag. Um, I certainly don't recall any litigation strategy that uh, would raised to any level of um, us showing um, even a pair of deuces, never mind a pair of kings. And then finally, the dollars that we're talking here are not Plum Island dollars. If there are dollars involved, there are dollars from Ward 1 to Ward 6. So um, this is a citywide problem, not a Plum Island problem. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I agree with everything that Councilor Jones said about uh, blind trust in the AG's office, and uh, I, I find it uh, uh, redundant that we're going to go through this again with Plum Island. Uh, the word responsibility was uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, we're responsible um, to let people know what's going on. We're responsible for the people that are paying the tax bills, again, one through six because we are paying for these failures that are happening within the system. Um, it was mentioned about um, um, responsibility and um, only because it's a political season. While it seems funny the political season that you know we've had te uh, some tests back on some uh, things uh, for over a month and a half and the council hasn't been privy to any of those things and we haven't been asked, asked in, to executive session. So you know, you fight fire with fire. You know, it, it's all here, so and everything. But, 
Um, I think we owe, um, we owe it to the residents of Plum Island to let them know what's going on. Uh, again, no strategies were ever spoken to uh, or talked about uh, before. Um, the mayor's office has made statements about it. The Newburytown manager has made statements about this. Um, it was discussed in Newburytown meetings, not under executive session, uh, but you know we feel as though that you know we need to keep it in executive session and in house here. And um, and I don't feel good about that. And I don't know why any other councils would feel good about hiding things from the constituency, especially in an election season. Open government. You want to know what's going on in this city. You want to know. You pay your bills. You pay your taxes. You should know. You should be privy to this information. I urge you all to vote yes on this. Thank you, Mr. President. I feel like I'm the only person who's not saying something. Um, so much. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm with Councilor Sullivan 100% in favor of open government. I'm in favor of open government. But I question whether this order is open government. I mean, it's clearly opening government. Executive session is part of government. <coughs> um, it's opening government. I don't think it's open government, though. Um, I'm with my peers in that I haven't heard any test forums. I haven't heard any of uh, a lot of the matter that my fellow colleagues have mentioned. And I must add, Mr. President, that I feel um, conflicted from the perspective that many of the new report residents who are watching this meeting right now probably have no idea what we're talking about. Um, and so I have no idea how I'm going to vote. That's a solid. Shocking. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I must address the Councilor Ward of Ward 1's uh, personal attack on me, my integrity, and my motivations. My motivation is simply to inform people that are paying for a service, that there are problems with it, and what to expect with, those, with, that, with the problems from those services. Because they're ultimately going to pay for it, one way or the other. So, to, you know, I, I am insulted by your remarks, okay? Um, and as I said before, the wording on this is very simple. Ongoing problems with Plum Island sewer and water services. It's not asking for anything more than to inform them that they're having problems down there. When we came in on a Saturday morning for an executive session, I heard from at least three Plum Island residents on Sunday morning that knew exactly what took place in this room. And I just let it go. I didn't say a word. The people on Plum Island know that there is something going on and they think that we're keeping it behind closed doors. All I am asking is that they be informed of the problems down there. Now, if it makes anybody feel any better, if somebody in this room thinks that I'm making political hay here, I'll change my motion to table this or send it to committee, if it makes you feel any better. OK? What's that? I will apologize if you think I was insulting. That was not my intention. The residents that I have spoken to on Plum Island have heard the opposite of what you just said. So I am defending them. I, I, I speak to people who are in support of you. I ask, you know, what is it with um, um, Councillor Sullivan? Why are you supporting him? And I've heard things. So we can go back and forth here. I don't want to go back and forth here. I, I'm not here to do that. I am representing my constituents on Plum Island, and this is what the majority, if not all I've spoken to, have, have asked me to do, have asked me to say. I apologize. For further discussion, the motion is to approve, unless you want to make a motion to the table, or to send it to me, that's what we can make. Move the question. Roll call. So motion to approve order number two. Councillor Derrick. Yes. Councillor Earls. Present. Councillor Harquist. No. Councillor Hearsaw. Present. <laughs> Councillor Hutchinson is absent. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Sullivan. Yes. Councillor Cameron. No. <coughs> Councillor Connell. No. Councillor Cronin. Yes. 
Council O'Brien. Yes. One, two, three, four, five yeses. Motion needing six. Motion fails. Order three. Order three is uh, dated September 30th, pursuant to chapters 40, section 15 and 15A of the City Council of City to report hereby determines that such permanent easements of city owned property located at 115 Water Street and described in an order of taking file with Essex South Registry will allow the owners of lots located at 113, 117, and 119 Water Street to access by foot vehicle those parcels of land depicted as parcels A, B, and C on plan entitled Plan of Land for the facility at 115 Water Street dated January 17, 2013. Um, Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Discussion. Mr. President, I'm going to have to recuse myself from <coughs> discussion uh, as I'm a member of the American Yacht Club, which may have an interest in this particular motion. I'm sorry, the second one? Thank you. Further discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there are representatives from the DPS here, if perhaps uh, any council has any questions. Otherwise, this is clearly a, uh, uh, an item which uh, I understand the solicitor requires us to do. Mm -hmm. yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 What about a block party? Yes. Thank you. Council Earls? Yes. Council Harquist? Yes. Council Herzog? Yes. Council Jones? Yes. Council Sullivan? Yes. Council Cameron? Yes. Council Connell? <laughs> Council Cronin? Yes. Oh, here. Council Bryan is not here. Here. Thank you. We want to uh, supplement the budget number one FY14. Reads as follows, City Council City the Report approves the Mayor's Supplemental Budget Request Number 1, FY 2014, in the amount of $284,526. Would you like me to list? Motion to refer to Budget and Finance. I read the, uh, what it is before it goes to the committee. That's okay. okay with the Council. Thank you. Comprehensive Zoning Review, $60,000. Sidewalk Repairs, $60,000. Minor Roadway Repairs. Uh, $50,000, leaf debris loader, $7,000, potlet mal signage, $2,500, Greenleaf Fire Station asbestos abatement, $30,000, Greenleaf Fire Station dispatch console system, $35,593, City Clerk's Office filing system, $11,036, Microsoft license, $8,480, mobile data terminals, $6,417, and copier scanners, $13,500 submitted. Edward C. Cameron. I'll take a motion. <coughs> motion. Mr. President, Mr. President, I would ask that uh, at this time <coughs> we approve the $60,000 for comprehensive zoning review as uh, we have the opportunity to move that forward with a consultant and then allow the rest to be. I'm sorry, is there anything <coughs> else that wants to be taken out and acted on tonight? Part of now. And approval of the Bartlett Mal uh, line item, and then the rest be uh, submitted to budget and finance. Second. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> so 60,000 zone review and 2,500 Bartlett. Yes. What is it? Law Mal, sir? Bartlett Mal. 2,500. I just want to speak to the Bartlett Mal. I mean, it, it is, it, it's really, a, it should be a city priority at this point. Um, there's, there's children touching the water, there's people still feeding the ducks. It's, it's getting worse as we speak because of these. Um, so it's just a small line item to really push what could become a bigger health hazard. So I just want signage. That's all we're looking for. I would call it an emergency. Thank you. If um, you would allow a friendly amendment, I'd also ask to approve the uh, $60,000 in sidewalk repairs. What 
I'll second. I'll second the amendment. <laughs> second. So we have three. The sidewalks are on the right. Sidewalks. Hey, is this the sidewalks? Is this just the uh, amount of money that they want to put into the? It's just the amount of money. There's no list, I don't think. No, there isn't a list associated with this particular request. Uh, this is part of the city's uh, commitment when they accepted the, the meals tax mm -hmm. uh, to appropriate fifty thousand dollars or fifty percent, excuse me, uh, from the prior year actual receipts of meals tax. Um, that was not a list. Does the DPW have a list? Yes, absolutely. And I will provide it to the council in the, the uh, next council packet. Thank uh, you very much. Memo of what's been done so, and what's planned to be done. So we have to vote on it to see what's in it. <laughs> okay. Nancy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to know if we fund this tonight, is that going to take effect before the snow flies? Or will that, that $60,000 for sidewalks to approve tonight, will that work <coughs> in this year? No, there's ongoing sidewalks uh, work that has been contracted with this uh, prior fiscal year's money that's ongoing now. Uh, the money that will be appropriated through this initial supplemental budget request will be done next spring. So what's the rush? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Why are, we, why are we rushing this if it's something that we're appropriating money now? Uh, I'll, I'll, ask the, I'll ask the counter to that, um, which is, uh, it's, it's a fait accompli, the list, while, while I think the list is actually written in pencil until the um, uh, president gets a chance to look at it. Um, <laughs> the, the, the list, the list. <laughs> workforce, got plenty of dead sidewalks coming, I can see. Um, <laughs> the, list, the list exists. However, <laughs> what we gain from sending it to committee to continue to discuss the list um, or to continue to discuss the funding, it's a fait accompli. Um, what we don't, because of the change in Chapter 90, thanks to his honor, the governor withholding um, what, the legislator, what, what the legislature earmarked for us, we won't get all of um, the sidewalks that we had planned for this year. So this 60000 will simply be going toward finishing up this year's list and beginning next year's list and seeing whether or not we're held hostage yet again on that. Just on sidewalk repair, I think um, over the past four years, uh, the council in general has been um, very, very proactive in uh, sidewalk repair. Um, example is the 50% meals tax. I think that this is a, um, Another way that this council can show its commitment to sidewalks in the community, number one, and number two, that um, because as, as Councilor Jones has, has said, um, we have gotten a very late start. Hopefully, instead of spinning our wheels, we can have uh, sidewalk projects in the pipeline with boots in the ground as soon as um, there's a thaw in the spring. And we may as well just get this final to DPS and, and get going with this. I think it's that important. Well, grab your defibrillators. I agree with both Councillors Jones and Cronin. Um, <laughs> just a comment about this. When I first came on the council, we spent $25,000 a year on sidewalks. We upped it to $50,000. Some of you may recall at one point in that process. Now we're up to 135. dollars uh, we're working on a backlog. I think we did something prudent a couple of years. I don't see any reason, uh, given the fact that we have made this commitment to hold this up uh, any longer. We can act easily on this, and it's something that, uh, you know, for walking the streets and sidewalks at Newburyport uh, is, is painfully evident that it needs to be done. So I'd encourage the action on it tonight. Uh, Mr. President, did the record reflect that both um, um, Councilors uh, Cronin and Connell mentioned Merrimack Street as a priority? I just don't know if that was, I thought I heard that. <laughs> Merrimack cool. Street, Merrimack. When I see the list in pencil, I'll tell you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion now is 122500 is that correct? Yes. And there was a second? There was a second, yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Darvin. Yes. Councillor Earls. Yes. Councillor Harquist. Yes. Councillor Hirsog. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Sullivan. <coughs> yes. 
Councilor Kent. Yes. Councilor Tom. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Bryan. Yes. services designed to protect the lives and property of Henry Fort residents and visitors through aggressive fire control, quality free hospital emergency medical care, fire prevention, prevention, public education, and effective scene management. Whereas the provision of free hospital emergency medical care is an integral part of the Henry Fort Fire Department's mission, whereas the fire-based provision of EMS has been adopted by numerous municipalities throughout the country, and may potentially be a more effective and efficient method of providing emergency medical services, then contracting for EMS services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Newburyport City Council urges the mayor and fire chief to explore the possibility through a cost-benefit analysis of whether or not a fire-based provision of EMS services could potentially be of benefit to the city of Newburyport. Co-sponsored councilors Parkquist, Cronin, and Connell. Move for approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to know, um, uh, is the fight department going to come back and have some work for money for this? I can answer that, Councilor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably not. Um, in some of the other communities that this has uh, been done in, uh, like the town of Amesbury or city of Amesbury now, uh, it's actually a money maker for them. They've been doing it for a long time. And they, they use it to supplement, um, in part, uh, other services within the fire department besides the ambulance. It takes a vote, but they, but they use it for, the, for those ideas. Um, I think that it's probably a good idea to explore this. It was something that I tried to encourage when I was, uh, when I was on the fire department. And I know that there are several people out there that are willing to work for this. But like any business, it's going to take a couple of years before you see a, um, a profit. So I, I think it's a good idea to have the mayor and probably public safety and the uh, fire chief sit down and do a cost analysis. Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I urge the, the mayor and the fire chief to um, review a copy of which is on the school department's website. There is a link to a 2007 uh, report issued by a task force. Um, Councilor Connell served on that task force along with a number of other individuals mm -hmm. in the city. And one of the outcomes of that report was the recommendation that one way of increasing revenue in the school department and the city as a whole is by implementing EMS services in the city. So um, some of those cost analyses were done so many years back that probably need to be revised, but that is a starting point that, I, again, I urge the uh, individuals to look at. Does anyone in the council feel that the public safety committee should be involved in this, or just the mayor or the fire chief? We always say we'd like to be involved in what's going on in the city, and mm -hmm. we feel there's a chance that there have some city council present, but that's up to you. What will happen is we will have the over, we will, don't have to be part of the study, I don't think, the study could be brought to us for the eventual funding. Obviously, there's going to be some purchasing done. So I think we don't, I don't see the reason why anybody here has to be part of the study. And that's all this is asking for. It's a cost-benefit analysis. <coughs> so I, I think, I, I feel comfortable. Any further discussion then? Roll call. 
Motion to approve. Order number five. Councilor Darabin. Yes. Councilor Earl. Yes. Councilor Harkwood. Yes. Councilor Persaud. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Sullivan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Bryan. Yes. The board guidances. Second reading ordinance number one. Section 2-30, performance of duties of mayor upon absence of disability, insert a new section. Section 2-30, whenever by reason of sickness, disability, absence from the city or other cause, the mayor shall be unable to perform the duties of the office, the president of the city council shall be the acting mayor and perform said duties. In accordance with section 3-8 of the charter, jointly submitted, councils O'Brien and Sullivan. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Approve ordinance number one, second reading. Council Darabin? Yes. Council Earl? Yes. Council Hart? Yes. Council Herzog? Yes. Council Jones? Yes. Council Sullivan? Yes. Council Cameron? Yes. Council Connell? Yes. Council Cronin? Yes. Council Bryan? Yes. The second on that was. Thank you. Second reading, 2-62 residency requirement, delete the same, insert a new section, dash 262, reads as follows, unless otherwise allowed by law, regulation, ordinance, or by this charter, all members of a multiple member body must be residents of the city at all times during their entire term of office. If a member of a multiple member body moves from the city during the term for which appointed, such seat shall immediately be deemed vacant and kind of filled in the manner provided for in section 3-3 of the charter, jointly submitted, councils O'Brien and Sullivan. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Darwin. Yes. Councilor Earl. Yes. Councilor Harper. Yes. Councilor Hirsau. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Sullivan. <coughs> yes. Councilor O'Brien. Yes. Sorry, Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Go Brian again. Thank you. Same vote. Question. Number three. Oh, yeah. Councillor three. Ordinance number three. <laughs> Delete 2 160, 126. Insert a new. 2 126 reads as follows Commencing with the inauguration of the mayor in January 2014 and continuing thereafter, the annual salary of the mayor shall be $98,000 plus $3,000 annual expense allowance, jointly submitted, Councilors O'Brien and Sullivan. Sure Move proof. to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor Darabin? Yes. Councilor Earl? Yes. Councilor Harquist? Yes. Councilor Hirsar? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Sullivan? Present. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Number four. Delete Motion second. Move from the table. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. Motion to approve. Second. Read about special meetings, please. Two dash twenty nine special meetings. Special meetings of the council shall be held at the call of the president or at the call of any six or more members <coughs> for any purpose. By causing a notice of the meetings to be delivered in hand or to the place of business or residence of each member of the council. Notice shall, except in emergency cases, of which the president shall be the sole judge, be delivered at least 48 weekday hours in advance of the time set, and shall specify the purpose or purposes for which the meeting is to be held. A copy of the notice shall be immediately posted. B, the mayor may at all times <coughs> call special meetings of the council for any purpose by causing a notice of the meeting to be delivered in hand or to the place of purpose a purpose for, to the place of business or residence of each member of the city council. This notice shall, except in emergencies, which the mayor shall be the sole judge, be delivered at least 48 weekday hours in advance of the time set, and shall specify the purpose or purposes for which the meeting is to be held. A copy of the notice shall be immediately posted. Jointly submitted, Councilors O'Brien and Sullivan. Move to approve. Second. This is first reading. It is. Yes. Move to receive. 
Uh, Sullivan? Uh, very quickly, I mean, uh, we, we met tonight and uh, we voted three to nothing in committee to take this off of the table tonight and bring it back to you. The questions at the last meeting, um, I think, had a lot to do with the wording. And tonight during the meeting, we checked, and this ordinance is word for word of what's in the new charter approved by the voters about two years ago. We did that. Point of order, Mr. President. Um, because because it's first reading, then we receive and file and wait for approval on second reading. Is that correct? So the motion is to receive and file. I'm not for ordinance. For appointments, it is. Appointments, it is. We receive and file in second reading. Mm -hmm. Ordinance, okay, yeah, correct. Have to correct. I'm correct once a year, so I think I'm right here. <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Darvin. Yes. Councilor Earls. Yes. Councilor Harquist. Yes. Councilor Herzog. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Sullivan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Bryan. Yes. Five. Take a motion to get it off the table. Motion to uh, remove from the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Council Sullivan. <laughs> 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 Wasn't ready for you there, Mr. President, but uh, here goes. Uh, this was. This one is uh, just directing uh, that all. Personnel files will be in one central location with the uh, human resources director. Any further discussion? Roll call. So approval of 2 128. Uh, Council Darwin? Yes. Council Earl? Yes. Council Harquist? Yes. Council Herzog? Yes. Council Jones? No. Sullivan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Bryan. Yes. I'll take a motion to uh, take six and seven off the table. So moved. moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number six, please. Motion to approve. <coughs> motion to receive and file. Oh, I'll take that motion back. Second. Discussion on number six. I know the, but the second was on the motion to receive the file. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? No, we got a roll call, sorry. This guy's a stickler in front of me, so. <laughs> likes to make uh, checks. Receive and file ordinance number six. Councilor Darwin? Yes. Councilor Earls? Yes. Councilor Harquist? Yes. Councilor Herzog? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Sullivan? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Cromwell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Bryan? Yes. Season five. I'll take a, another motion. Motion to, to approve. Remove from the table, order number seven. It's already been removed. We need a motion to either approve or receive the file. file. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call. Number seven, receive and file. Council Darvin? Yes. Council Earls? Yes. Council Harquist? Yes. Council Herzog? Yes. Council Jones? No. No. Council Sullivan? Yes. Council Cameron? Yes. Council Connell? Yes. Council Cronin? Yes. Council Bryan? Yes. We want to committee reports. Budget and finance. Yes, Mr. Mr. President, uh, motion to remove um, the first item, which is uh, the uh, amended ordinance on interest on water and sewer bills. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Go ahead. Mr. President, uh, motion to approve. 
Second. Second. Discussion? Councilor Cameron. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, budget and Finance met last week, and this was also posted as, as a Committee of the Whole, and we voted three to zero in favor of this. Um, Ethan Manning from the Water and Sewer Department is here uh, if we uh, have any further questions. Um, but basically, this is changing, um, and this was approved by each of the Water and Sewer Commissions, um, I believe, and, and as we know, they're, they're joined together. Um, currently, any late bill on water and sewer, there is a uh, $15 uh, late fee that's quarterly. So if you have a $100 bill that you're late on and you're late for four quarters, um, you're, you're going to get charged 15 times four quarters, $60. If you owe $10,000, um, you are going to get charged uh, $15 each quarter for $60. So uh, the way it's structured now, um, an analogy that uh, we talked about the other night is sort of like if you were um, this won't be a poker analogy either. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, if you were speeding on Route 95 and going 75 miles an hour and you got a $10 ticket, or if you were speeding at 120 miles an hour and you got a $10 ticket, um, there's just no proportionality to it. So um, the recommendation is to go to a 14% um, per, per year um, percentage late penalty. Um, essentially, this would mean that the people who had uh, small um, late uh, amounts would pay less, um, and Ethan Manning distributed a, um, a spreadsheet about that earlier. Um, so if you were, were behind on $100, you would pay um, 14%, $14 plus this $5 late fee. Um, if you, under the new scheme of 14%, if you had a very large bill, you would, you would pay proportionally a lot more than you're paying now. So to me, it's a, a way to um, you know, make the penalty, because it is a penalty, uh, fit, fit the amount um, that we were behind. Um, we uh, asked in committee if this was revenue neutral or not. It actually is. Um, it's within a couple of thousand dollars um, of, of what uh, last year there was $74,000 collected if you did it by this 14%. Um, it actually, I, I think we, we would cl have collected $76,000 or something, you know, with just within, uh, within it. So it's not really, it's not punishing anybody anymore. It is just really giving people incentive with the large bills just to pay up. And, um, you know, approximately each year we have 700, 800 um, delinquent accounts. And there was some data that was sent to you uh, earlier. And most communities are doing it this way, whether they have enterprise funds, um, and you know, it seemed sensible to us, so we voted to approve it three to zero. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, uh, Council Sullivan. Uh, may I address uh, Mr. Manning? Sure. Might as well get up. <laughs> <laughs> you got comfortable shoes on tonight? <laughs> <clears throat> no, my question is um, on this. How many, how many people that are delinquent um, mm -hmm. are actually having a problem paying the bill because of finances of their own? Um, how, many, how many people that are delinquent in their water and sewer bills are actually delinquent because they can't afford to make the payments? Do you have any idea? We, we wouldn't know why, why they can't pay. We'd, we'd be speculating. Um, Nobody ever walks into your office and says, I can't pay because I can't afford it? I mean, yeah. Pay the full amount. Is, uh, let me re let me redirect the question in another way. Then, um, is there any type of services that the water and sewer provide to help these people make these payments without a penalty? Uh, yes, in the past there have been some customers with abnormally uh, large bills, where the water and sewer commissions have allowed them to apportion it over a number of years without a penalty. That's correct, and those are still in place. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. The city clerk read the whole section. 2-392 states, an interest charge of 14% per annum shall be made out of water and sewer bills <coughs> remaining unpaid 31 days after the issue date as specified on the quarterly bill. A demand charge of $5 shall be added to any water and sewer account that remains unpaid and delinquent until the final bill is issued in that fiscal year. Submitted, Council Cameron. Any further discussion? Roll call them, please. Councilor Derivan. Yes. 
Council Earls. Yes. Council Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirsog. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Sullivan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Bryan. No. Anything else? Yes, Mr. President. Motion to remove item number two from committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What? Uh, Mr. President, motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President, thank you. Um, this item is in regards to the um, administrative uh, Teamsters uh, contract. This was, uh, has been in negotiation. This is a tentative agreement between the city and that union. Um, as uh, you may recall, there are 17 employees in that bargaining unit. Um, in your packet, um, what we were given um, earlier this month is the, um, the changes. And just, just to briefly say, these are um, the reason we're voting on this. The money has already been appropriated for fiscal year 14. That was, that was included in the operating budget um, under contingency uh, for these types of negotiations. The reason we need to vote on this is because there are financial implications for the future. Um, so this year would be a 1.0% a 1 COLA on the following two fiscal years, 1.5 in each year. Um, there have been some significant um, give backs, I, I guess it would be the word, um, with the union agreeing for five plus days of, si of vacation time for new employees, um, some changes to sick leave buyback and sick leave language um, that's going to help um, manage the workforce, and some other changes uh, around uh, progressive discipline that's more consistent with other union contracts. Um, we, we were given some additional information today that the, the financial implications are fairly small. It's in the single thousands, I believe, uh, from email that we were all sent earlier today, and Councillor Hutchison had asked for that information. Um, and uh, we were also sent the, the current contract. And again, there, I think the changes in the language are good for the city. I think those are pretty reasonable COLA increases. And if you read the uh, article about uh, Boston, uh, City of Boston negotiations with their fire department um, unions uh, Sunday, there were some really incredible um, increases happening in other municipalities. So I think our employees deserve um, some thanks for, for being reasonable and knowing that we are, are not, uh, you know, Nuts. Not, uh, not swimming in money. So uh, we did approve it three to zero and ask for your support. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> no. Anything else? Yes, Mr. President. Um, <coughs> motion to remove item number three. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Council Cameron. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, if, if you would indulge us in budget and finance, um, we asked um, for a very, very short presentation from Auditor Squillis, um, sometimes we get these reports um, ab about the final year expenditures and they quickly um, get, get uh, lost or ignored and I think it would be good just to take a quick look at that and if, if uh, that would uh, be okay for the President, Mr. Squillis can give a quick. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bill Squillis, Finance Director. Um, as you know, um, the budget process is a very comprehensive process. It starts with the city crunching numbers to see exactly what we need. Uh, then, after several months of evaluation and coming up with cost estimates, the city council for several weeks goes over these numbers and uh, comes up with an appropriation, approval of the mayor's recommendation in terms of what the city needs. Uh, and to protect the taxpayers' money. This last year, fiscal year 2013, the total appropriation was over $52 million. Uh, that money was spent in a variety of ways. But the bottom line is, is that through that evaluation process that involved the City Council, originated with the Mayor and the staff, uh, the City came in with, within 1.3% of that projection. And I think that's a tremendous 
uh, compliment to not only the administration and to the staff, but to the city council, because to come in that close uh, in these times of fiscal difficulties, of challenges, uh, I think is a great accomp accomplishment. <coughs> Uh, what that resulted in, in terms of dollars, is just about $679,000 left over. Now that sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but it only represents 1.3% of what the City Council approved back last June. That is in the general fund. The general fund, as you know, is the city government uh, uh, departments, uh, less the water, the sewer, and the harbor master's office which are enterprise funds. Enterprise funds function like private businesses in a way, in that they charge a fee, and th those fees have to support the activities that are provided and the services that are provided to the public. In some of these cases, there are variables, for example, in the harbor master's office, a lot of the variables depend on the weather and what their needs are in staffing and what their needs are for materials and supplies. The Harbor Master's Office uh, spent only 83% of the appropriation, uh, which meant uh, or re reverted to or, or it, in dollars and cents was $64,386 left over from that appropriation. The original appropriation was, was a little over 300000 In the Water and Sewer Department, in the Water uh, Department, uh, the Water Department came within 94% of the appropriation leaving 294,000 unspent. Uh, and also with the sewer department, it was a little bit more, they spent 86.4% uh, of their appropriation with 844,693 left over. Now the major reason for water and sewer, is, as you know, there was a tremendous amount of, of, of work that was done in the sewer plants and the water plants this past year and the, there was a reduction in, in, in consumption uh, 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 that resulted in a lot of electrical charges, operational charges, chemical charges were reduced. Uh, so that is part of the reason why those particular uh, departments uh, did not spend uh, closer to 100%. A couple of the other areas just to, to point out, and again, uh, I hate to mention it because I know the staff is anxious to start with the budget process again, but we're getting ready to start the bu budget <laughs> process again. <laughs> and that will involve dealing, working with you, the Budget and Finance Committee, to look at every expenditure this year, see exactly what we spent in detail, and why we need additional money next year, or why that, that line item can be cut. And also, as you know, the City Council approved the Mayor's recommendation that this is a whole new budget process in that we approve the budget by categories, by salaries, personal, personal expenses, supplies, capital outlay, uh, other services. All these budget categories are lumped together and create the department budget, but the departments have the ability to move money within each of these categories, which, and I'm sure Councillor Jones is happy about <laughs> this, you haven't seen much of me uh, this last year because the, 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 the transfers really have been <coughs> quite minimal and you haven't had to deal with a lot of the very small procedural transfers that, that, that really uh, the administration can handle without having to have uh, time spent, uh, city council spending time with those. So that has worked extremely well and has given the, the city uh, an opportunity to, uh, to manage uh, without having to uh, get tied down with a lot of the financial uh, burdens of, uh, of financial management. For example, uh, as you know, we have a new fire chief, mm. and, uh, which is certainly a very uh, a comprehensive process to, to select a, a new chief, uh, to bring in uh, consultants to help with that selection process, to bring in candidates from, from really from all over the country. Uh, and and that, that, that process cost an additional $20,000 that really wasn't budgeted. However, there were expenses in the salary line item for the fire department that provided extra funds so that the city council didn't need to, to approve a transfer. That money was available because of those savings and the city was able to do that without appropriating any additional money or actually any more taxes being, uh, being asked of the, of the residents because money was within the budget. It was just managed more effectively. Um, 
the fire department also uh, had uh, a, a number of, of, of uh, retirements. And the, the money, uh, which now is in a, a different system for retirements, is now in a special fund, which will be appropriate, appropriated each year as it's needed, and then carried over each year if that money is not needed. But this last past year, the, uh, the fire department uh, did, need, uh, did need additional money uh, for, uh, <coughs> for, uh, for uh, uh, some of those, some of those, re some of those uh, 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 items. Um, the overtime, uh, unfortunately, in the fire department was uh, over uh, uh, the appropriated amount by $98,000. Uh, again, because of the excess money in the personal service and because of the retirements, uh, there was money to cover uh, m much of this. The fire department, uh, I'm sorry, the, the police department, and we're going to talk about overtime, and I know everybody's interested in overtime, uh, came in very close to their appropriation. They were just about a little over $3,900 uh, over their appropriation. But again, because of the ability to manage money within that personal services category, did not have to come back to the city council to ask for more money. They found the money within that category. Uh, there'll be additional questions, I'm sure. But that's a very brief uh, overview and a little sample of, of what is uh, a result of the, this uh, past year's uh, financial operations. Be happy to answer additional questions and certainly look forward to uh, the budget review when we will get into the real details of each line item. Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Mr. President. If, you, if I could just ask a quick follow-up to either Mr. Squillis or, or to Mr. Manning, for that matter. Um, water and sewer. Your end, water department approximately 94% was used. Sewer department approximately 84% was used. You explained the reasons why. My question is, is looking forward to the next year, two years, three years, and so forth, <coughs> should we expect to see similar numbers or should it be closer to the upper 90s in terms of percentage used? I'd be happy to speak to that. Um, and we had, we had discussed this. Uh, in, during the budget process, especially in regards to the biosolids line item. Um, as you know, there's been work ongoing at the sewer plant for the past several years. And as a result, you've noticed a tent over there. They haven't been operating at full capacity, so as a result, electricity costs have gone down, heat costs have gone down, chemical costs have gone down, but that's because they're operating out of, out of a tent and as you know, they're, op they're not operating at full capacity. Uh, so once they are you know, done, hopefully later this year, we should be able to see those costs you know, level off to where they should be, and then we can properly budget for them. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I'd, um, I think I may speak for the uh, council in saying that we all miss seeing Mr. Squillis um, um, a lot. It's kind of like in a television analogy, bringing Alex Trebek to a sitcom. And, um, and, and I, pers <laughs> I personally appreciate your ability to make, um, make perfect sense to me of some of these things that baffle me. So thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Anything else Mr. coming President, up? Just, just one other um, item. Uh, this is item number four, uh, motion to remove from committee. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to approve. Second. 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 Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. President. This, this is a procedural um, thing that it, it's new to us. Um, so this is the transfer of $390,810 dollars. $390, um, from general administration compensated absences into a new reserve account. Uh, we created this uh, a few months ago in the FY14 uh, budget process. In the past, um, sick leave buyback and other compensated absences were, were put in, in the line items in the budget. Um, I believe they were spread throughout the departments. I may be wrong about that. It gets a little blurry, as we know. Um, but this is a way for all of those to be uh, aggregated together and spent for those purposes. And it, it gives um, a little more, more cushion, because again, it's hard to exactly predict within a department how your expenditures are gonna go, but when you're operating out of a larger pool, 
Um, it's not going to make one department look bad if, if they um, had to do a buyback. And uh, we'll be doing this. This will be one of these we do every year. And uh, it, it's a little bit separate from the operating budget. So um, I, I imagine we'll, there'll be a rollover next year, whatever's not spent. And then some additional monies would need to be appropriated from the operating budget into that. But um, that's essentially what that's all about. We approved it three to zero. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me. <clears throat> That's it for budget and finance. General government? Mr. President. Uh, motion to remove uh, item number one from committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Council Sullivan. Um, I'll defer any questions to Mr. Lombardi. <laughs> Have the uh, city clerk read partially what this is about. I just want to make sure what we're talking about, intermissible agreement, animal control. Animal control. We already approved the other one. Um, <clears throat> it goes on for a number of pages, if I might uh, try to summarize. We can Maybe. let the... Uh, Mr. Lombardi summarized. He's done it very well about 10 times, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd defer to Mr. Lombardi any time. <laughs> you know. Thank you, Eric Jones. Um, so what's before you is an intermunicipal agreement with the town of West Newbury for shared services for animal control. Uh, the Board of Selectmen for West Newbury has already approved this agreement. Um, the arrangement is essentially that Newburyport will take the lead. They'll be the lead municipality. It's a one-year agreement with two options for additional years going out. Um, Newburyport will uh, employ its current full-time animal control officer and will hire an additional part-time on-call position. Uh, West Newbury will uh, pay the city $20,000 annually, um, and that number was included as a projected revenue in the FY14 budget. Uh, we anticipate approximately $10,000 to cover uh, the additional on-time part, uh, on-call part-time uh, animal control position. Uh, so essentially the city is net uh, $10,000 uh, as part of this agreement. We also have use of the West Newbury uh, animal control van, which is a much better vehicle than we currently have. Any questions? Councilor Connell. Uh, one question, Mr. Lombardi. Um, the employees will be on whose books, and are we going to be responsible for the retirement benefits for the employees at the end of their career? Uh, so we currently, the city currently has uh, one full-time employee uh, who's a member of the Teamsters Administrative Assistance uh, Bargaining Unit, and uh, the new person coming on will be on time part call and therefore won't be in the part of the retirement system. So we're not adding any personnel in terms of those obligations. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. So to approve the intermunicipal agreement with the West New Reef for Animal Control Services, Councillor Earls. Yes. Councillor Har Harquist. Yes. Councillor Hersog. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Sullivan. Yes. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Connell. Yes. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Councillor Derivan. Yes. Councillor President O'Brien. Yes. Uh, request to remove uh, item number two from General Government Committee. Second. Second. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We already approved that. Good. This Still in our packet. District, not the I don't care. My, that's my knowledge. We approved the last meeting. I can, service. I can look in my uh, notes. Okay. The, uh, the, the veterans IMA was approved at the last meeting. There's still a veterans home rule petition, which is in committee, and that'll remain in committee for now. Right, that remains in committee, right. Okay, never mind. Never mind. For number three. Yep, uh, motion to remove number three from committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Um, well, uh, boards and commissions to well if I could actually um, suggest actually I believe coming out of committee was I was not part of this vote I was only listening I believe coming out of committee is an amended version is that correct amended version right and the amended um, version was to have 
annual report during budget time by all committees. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it with me. Okay. Um, do, do you have a copy of this, Mr. Clerk? I, I, I don't. Is it an insertion so of... I could... So if you wouldn't mind reading, just changing biannual to annual. Happy to. So this is section 64, biannual report to be made. Um, it reads as follows. City boards, committees, commissions, and authorities are established by ordinance or whose members are confirmed by city council shall make a biannual report to council on all matters coming under its jurisdiction. Does that contain the changed language? Annual report. Annual. So you're changing biannual to annual. <coughs> Correct. Correct. Move to approve as amended then. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved as amended. Some ordinance. Approved the whole thing. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. So that's the vote on the amendment. Vote on the amendment. Roll call. The whole. Roll call. Mm -hmm. we roll call on the amendment. So again, to avoid confusion, that's a roll call on the motion to approve as amended. Yes. Um, that's changing the word from biannual to annual. Uh, Councilor Earls. Yes. To point of order, you started with Councilor Derivan all night, but. You know, um, I have to confess something. I ran out of that sheet. That's I moved to the last sheet. <clears throat> but you're you right. Me, you made me do all those roll calls. I told right, you, right. you shouldn't have to. <laughs> I'm not, filing a protest. <laughs> We're on our 18th. Do them all over <laughs> again. So vote doesn't count. I did count. think I would <laughs> slip that by you, but I got caught. I'm sorry. Um, let me start again. Councilor Derivan. <laughs> yes. Councilor Earl. Yes. Councilor Hartquist. Yes. Councilor Herzog. Yes. Councilor Hutchinson. Is still... Absent. <laughs> Councillor Jones, <laughs> much like my mind. Uh, Councillor Sullivan. Yes. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Connell. Yes. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Council President O'Brien. Yes. Joint education? Nothing at this time. License and permits? Yes, motion to remove application for new flammable combustible liquids license from committee. Second. Uh, motion to receive and file. Second. Discussion, Councilor Earls. Motion to receive and file simply because we had a public hearing which, which was mandated and came out approved so we can receive and file to eliminate it from committee. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Neighborhood and City Services? Nothing at this time. Planning and Development? Nothing at this time. Hallelujah. Public Safety? Uh, yes. Um, motion to remove item five. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Go ahead. Excuse motion me. to receive and file. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? Item six, motion to remove uh, Loco Sports Half Marathon. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Councilor Cronin. This is, I believe, the third annual um, race. It's, uh, it's mostly in uh, neighboring community of West Newbury. Uh, it starts and ends at the high school. Um, and uh, it's all women and one lucky guy. <laughs> well, you know, it was uh, three nothing out of committee. I'm sorry. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Anything else? One last um, motion to remove item seven sp uh, spooky rail trail Halloween. Second. Case. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Go ahead. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Anything else? Is that it? Oh. Public Utilities. <coughs> Rules Committee. Nothing. Nothing to report. Go to the order. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what I don't know what happened to it. It was gone. I thought I put everything back in order, but no worries. Oh, I know. You implied that I was. Oh, okay. Um, I know.